<laughs> Hello, all you beautiful people. I'm Alex with Cactus and Lace Weddings, and welcome back to another webcast roundtable discussion. <laughs> this is Rachel and Lori, and today we have Carmen, and I'm excited because we get to eat in this one again. Yeah, so Carmen is the owner of Sweet Sauce Coffee, but she also does charcuterie and other food stuff. Uh, she does all kinds of stuff, so <laughs> um, like hot chocolate bars and stuff. So um, she's brought a little charcuterie setup for us. Yeah, just a little. I could smell fun. these cucumbers from the other room. They look so delicious. <laughs> oh. I was looking at the mozzarella balls. I thought the mozzarella balls. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so today I thought a good topic, since it's now springtime, uh, we would talk about what's new. You know, wedding season is, well, I guess it's technically already been going on, but the big rush of weddings is fast upon us. So I thought we would talk about what is new for 2020. What do you guys think so far? What are you seeing so far? New, like, wedding trends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, colors. Yeah. Especially. Lots of the, the color colors. change. Mm -hmm. You know, we what's What's weird, I think, is that we're getting a lot of brides. It used to be traditionally you do fall in fall colors. You yeah. do spring and spring colors. Now it's like all over the board. We get fall colors in spring and spring colors in fall. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like great. it doesn't matter yeah. anymore. It's like it, there's no just do what you want kind of thing. So <laughs> well, yeah, interesting. personalization is definitely getting bigger. I mean, traditional weddings, the something blue thing is kind of going a little bit by the wayside. Of course, people still want to incorporate, um, you know, family traditions, heritage, that sort of thing, but personalization and making it 100% your own yeah. is definitely... And that happens with food a lot, too, because mm -hmm. they want, you know, like, they're like, oh, we don't drink, so nobody's going to drink. Right. Um, or, you know, we, we want pizza, and who cares if, uh, you know, they wanted their regular chicken dinner. We're, <laughs> we're going to have pizza. We're right. going to have taco bars. We're going to have... Yeah, the trend of a sit-down, seated, like, buffet style or something like that, or where they serve you, really is changing into something different and unique that you... <laughs> it's a lot of cars. I know. <laughs> There's like a motorcycle rally going on oh, right now. Oh, that's cool. Jealous. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice day for it. A nice true. day for a bike ride. It is beautiful outside. Mike is pouting back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so I poked around online to see what was going on, and of course I came to The Knot, which I think is probably what a lot of new brides encounter start. first when they start thinking about, you know, it's time to start planning a wedding. I can tell you from personal experience, when I realized I was getting married, I'm like, The Knot. That was like the first magazine I pulled off the drugstore rack. And um, they came out recently with a list of the top 20 trends for 2020. Just all around <laughs> mm -hmm. and I was disappointed again because no one seems to like or want to do art deco and that's what I want to see um. <laughs> that's what my vintage soul craves but if you came to cactus and lace we would truly do art deco I because know, that says what this is what you, you that's want, what I want. So, right. I yeah know. so trend doesn't necessarily no. mean that you should be doing it either mm -hmm. um, stuff that's trending is you know what's popular right right now or what's hot but like think about what was hot in, you know, like 1988 or something, you know, like puffy sleeves and yeah. whatnot. That's not going to look cool even two years later. So trendy doesn't always necessarily mean, oh, that's what I should be doing. I like something. to say meaningful. Yeah. Make it meaningful to you. If you love something and you, it's part of you, like we have, I have a bride that's a tattoo artist and um, I had several brides that were actually tattoo artists so you know you could go that direction or you could bring in um just we had the correct curic curic i can't say it caricature caricature caricature, <laughs> caricature <laughs> cookies anyway, yes it's just whatever you like and whatever means something to you at the at yeah. the time in your life so yeah I agree. I Trendy so. doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Trends are good and fun are and, good. and like how they change. And you can and go with them, but don't make it set in stone, I guess. Is yeah. Kind of the don't feel like that's what you have to do. Yeah. Is what I, though it is fun to see. I guess people are coming out. to realize now that if you're going to spend so much time and so much money and so much effort into this one special day, you better love the heck out of that day. You're going to make it 100% yeah. your own. Exactly. Well said. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. And, um, and thinking about how it's actually going to run instead of a lot of, you know, people doing it themselves, mm -hmm. having a planner be there is so, I think, vital. <laughs> I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen tons of weddings where people try to do everything on their own and then they've got... They're trying to organize the timeline. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make sure the food is done. And 
it, it, then it doesn't become fun at all. No, it was, I've done a couple of weddings like that and it was just, the couple was running around crazy and I felt, I almost felt really bad for them. I wanted to be like, I'll help you because you need that there. You shouldn't be the one who's dictating and, you know, telling everybody where to be and when to be, what, when things should be done, all yeah. that stuff. I think it's really... It's not fun. It's not. It makes your day... And it, right. Not and then cool. years later, when you look back on that, you're going to think about how much work it was and you're not really going to... I know every time I say something, it's a motorcycle rally. <laughs> but... Yeah, I don't think you're going to remember the beautiful day that you had. You're going to remember how stressed out you were yeah. if you don't have somebody there helping you out as a planner right? to make sure all of these other little details are done. Organized. <laughs> Mike is back there. He just pointed to himself like, yeah, that was us. Yeah, we did everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, on my wedding too. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't eat any food at my wedding. Not a single thing. What's interesting is, is I think a lot of times uh, a bride and groom will think, well, maybe we'll save money do it ourselves. But... If you don't know the tricks, you actually spend, I think, more, more money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in the end, it's a product that maybe you are you are, or maybe you're not happy with at the end, and plus all the stress involved. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, that's what I've found anyway, is when I've ever tried something new and I can do that, I can make that. And then I look and I could have bought it for less, mm. much less. Yes, yeah, much less and money. Had and a better and your quality time. Yeah, the yeah. time, time and, your time and the stress. The so mm-hmm. that's really what and I find. wedding days. Yeah. You don't not where you want to learn that lesson. No, you don't. You don't want to do that. So, yeah. yep. So a lot of people are turning it over now. I think it's yeah, it's becoming more norm. really more normal to say, look, I'm working full time, or I'm going through my doctorate program, or I'm you know whatever it is. Um, and they're finally saying, okay, I don't want my mom to have to do this. I don't want yeah. It's a mom know. it falls on too. If oh, it's, yeah, it if you don't mom. have a planner, you're like, oh mom, make all my food. And then I see <laughs> yeah. these moms at these weddings, just like losing their mind and crying in the corner <laughs> not I'm our wedding <laughs> yeah not ours because you know we're taking done. care of it and you know we have we might be crying in the corner <laughs> <laughs> but the mom should enjoy the day too you know close yeah. friends and family shouldn't be trying to make food right absolutely <laughs> okay so the number one trend that everyone is requesting these days is uh Green vibes. They want eco-friendly. They want upcycled. They want zero waste or reduced carbon footprint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. We had um, several brides so far. In fact, uh, a current bride that I have mentioned that. And her concern was that what happens to the flowers after um, we're done with them? Do you tell them that we take them home sometimes and put them on our dinner tables? Yeah, the leftovers. We take the lovely leftovers. Yeah, (laughs) and and she had a good idea. There's two things we we can do. We can actually put the the flowers in a reusable container and just send it with the couple, and then they can put it at their reception if they're having one, a dinner or whatever, or just take it and put it in their hotel room and let them remind themselves of that beauty. And the other one is um, my bride had a great suggestion. We have a little senior center here, and she said, could you give it to them and let them just enjoy oh, yeah. them for a moment? And I thought, that's a great idea. You're getting two uses out of it. I've, I've done that when mm-hmm. we have extra flowers. And, you know, I've done two weddings that week. I already have some flowers on my right. table. So right. I'll just think of people I know locally who mm-hmm. could use, you know, some flowers. And I just mm-hmm. bring them over and say, here's a gift. So mm-hmm. I, we don't waste our flowers, obviously. Um, but we also, you know, replant the succulents mm-hmm. and we keep the air plants and the other plants that will still reuse stay alive. The, the cactus, obviously, we replant that. We reuse it. We put it in our own gardens. Or yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have succulents from a wedding we did. I don't even know how long ago. Like they're ago. still just, more. yeah, yeah. And they're still just hanging yeah. out. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. I can't it did take us a while. while. <laughs> we, we, I think I went through 30 succulents of death before I <laughs> figured out how not to water them too much and just to leave them alone. <laughs> I'm them terrible alone. at overwatering yep. all of so, my plants. Yeah. Oh, I have the opposite problem. Oh. I'm like, oh, you're still here. <laughs> have a drink. <laughs> I'm so, like, oh, yeah. are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? <laughs> are, you thirsty? <laughs> are you thirsty now? <laughs> well, it's what true. else does cactus and lace do? Um, that would be eco-friendly i mean obviously we have like really big parties with a lot of people and a lot of people can make a lot of waste yeah um and we work in a park yeah the state park so and they i know they have a lot of rules and regulations about <laughs> you're not allowed to litter out there oh of course yeah. anything that we bring in we take out whether that's all of it out. trash mm-hmm. or or anything else um 
We also avoid um, disposables. We use mm -hmm. um, real plates, real, plates, real, real glasses, glasses, real silverware, and we just wash it and reuse it again. Um, we don't like, we, I mean, there have been emergency situations or whatever where we've actually had to use plastic, and but our, our goal is to avoid that at all costs, really. Mm -hmm. We like the look of glass and crystal and, Absolutely. Um, you know, china. And um, so I think, you know, even our napkins usually are, we try and go with, because, yeah. you know, because she know. sews them. <laughs> yeah, I do. I we sew them. We make them. And she we, does yeah. a wonderful job. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we keep our stuff. So if once we've used something, we'll buy something for a wedding or make something for a wedding, but then we'll keep it in our stores and maybe reuse it or mm -hmm. repurpose it in a different way. Yeah. Um, Change we'll, it up. Yeah. We, we keep keep things going and if not we're we're also trying to buy used a lot of the times like we'll go to thrift stores yeah we'll stores. buy antique mm -hmm. stuff or thrift stuff mm -hmm. so that vintage we're things. vintage stuff things that are being reused so that we're not um creating more creating more waste yes. i try and do that too with food if i'm preparing something or whatever i don't use single-use plastics or anything like that i think it's really important to use glass i just bought these beeswax um like instead of baggies that you can use. Oh, I saw this. The it's a beeswax that you can you can wash it and you can oh, seal yeah. anything and there you can use I forget how many times that you can use one. Do you, you like them? Yes. Okay. Cool. They're reusable for about a year, aren't they? It for a really long time. I forget really how long it is, yeah. but it's really really cool to use stuff instead like that. Instead of using like um, saran wrap. Yeah, right. yeah. And for me, I can't stand the smell of saran wrap. I think it doesn't it, even work well. <sighs> It's I don't like it either. It sticks to I everything but the bowl. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, and I think it taints your food too. It smells funny after a while. And so it's this weird plasticky stuff that I definitely don't want on my food. I've never noticed that Saran Wrap has a smell. I have to go oh, home and like sniff my She has a really now. good nose. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm like, what is this? Was, yeah. <laughs> it's, she has a sensitive palate and a good nose. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, so that's really awesome. I think that's excellent that uh, Cactus and Lace has always been doing what we can to keep things green. Um, the next most popular thing that's going on with weddings right now, and this one made me laugh, <laughs> they called it micro weddings. And I looked to see what the not considered was a micro wedding, and they said 40 people or less. <laughs> yeah, that's a big wedding to us. And I was going to say, it's like, that's huge to Cactus yeah. and Lace. Yeah. <laughs> so we like specialize in micro weddings, and a micro Basically. wedding to us is like under 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Cactus and Lace speciality. Well, how would you go about um, treating a party of like 10 versus a party of 50, say? Because I know we've done, what's the most... Um, what's the biggest party that I Cactus think the biggest done? that we ever did was 75. 70 70 I thought there were that almost 80 was it that one that well, we with did? us but by the time yeah. you got our 10 people of staff and yeah the drivers, and, and with us I, included and the was, drivers and how lot. many people were physically there I think we ended up with 85 yeah. or what I 90, find with yeah. that is that the intimacy is lost even between the bride and the groom yeah. they don't have time to go around and greet everyone and you know, just smooge in that size of a group. It's or just enjoy huge. each other. Like yeah. you can't it's have like, an intimate moment when you're mm -hmm. trying to make sure that 70 other people are happy. Yeah, it's just too big for, for us and for Valley of Fire, I think. So yeah. we've started to tighten down a little bit on the number, more for their enjoyment, I think, and for ease of preparation. And yeah. just Valley of Fire uh, is, you can do a lot more people, but we've found that it just doesn't work. It's just not, you know, just doesn't work as does well. The, um, does the park enforce uh, limits? Yes. They do. They do. There's they a do. limit for like each site to how many guests mm -hmm. you can have yeah. for one So the event. biggest site that they will, the Seven Sisters is the largest site and the most they will amount total is 100. And that includes drivers, the officiant, uh, our team, right. mm -hmm. musicians, any, yeah, musicians <laughs> all, any, Caterings, yeah, yeah, any all back end stuff. So really, um, that you know that could be as much as 10 to 20 people on our end depending on on the wedding and um, capping things at 60 which is where we like to keep our you know our max um, makes the most sense mm -hmm. but you know a, a party of 10 versus a party of 60 um, well you can focus more on the individual right. guest yeah I mean, and, not and the style and the detail mm -hmm. um, when I think it's larger what's your perfect size I think I like between 20 and 30 20 20 ish 25 I mean that's just mine I, 
it's hard to say perfect because each each couple can have you know a very different you know if they're very outgoing and they love all the people a group of 30 can feel really good and intimate but then people who are really shy and you know giving them a group of of 10 can even feel like overwhelming Mm -hmm. and make them i think that's a good point Mm -hmm. good point I think what people were finding, and I read a little bit more on this on The Knot, was that if you have less people at your wedding, you can actually spend more. Yeah. And give them a greater experience. It's not just, you know, you show up, you sit quietly and listen for a bit, you eat, you know, your finger food, and then you leave. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) They're able to actually give, it's not only a special event for the bride and groom, but it's also extremely special and intimate for the people that they've invited as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that totally. That's very true. Um, You get to really talk to the bride and groom you know if you've again if you've got a party of 60 and you're there at valley fire for three hours you know you divide that time by all those people that's a that's a short amount of time but if if you've only got 10 people then i I can have an intimate conversation with you i can give you advice about my wedding we can talk about the decor we can we can really drink and eat and enjoy and spend the day together versus Hi, 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 yeah. hi. <laughs> well, and especially when they're traveling from super far places, yeah. too, I feel like you really are coming out here for that specific experience. So if you have so many people and you can't, you know, even connect with half of them. Yeah. It's like I saw your face, but. Right, right. I noticed uh, one, well, there's been a few couples that have eloped to Vegas and then gone back home and had the big reception mm-hmm. for, you know, 100 or whatever. And, um, and I think that works for them, too. Um, other people, it's just, uh, <laughs> this is it. You know, we'll just have our little core group and, and be done with it, you know. But it's, again, it's whatever you want and whatever feels good to you. And so, yeah, yeah. it's pretty... Mm-hmm. But I encourage people to make that number as small as possible mm-hmm. and be worried about, do I want this person there? Mm-hmm. Does, does the, having them there make my day better than versus, is this person going to be offended if I don't invite them? Mm. I feel like that's a big reason why people have such large weddings is yeah. they think that they have to have all of these people there. If they have, if they have to invite so-and-so, well, then if they invite this person, then so-and-so has to come and so forth and so on. And they end up all with a, down. a huge wedding yeah. that they really do And you not ruin enjoy. your special day so yeah. that some other person may not be offended. Who you may or may not be re- yeah. you know, in a relationship I mean, later on. Yeah. You know, maybe you're not, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, it is hard, of course. I mean, you don't want to offend people or attention and family by inviting your cousin versus not inviting your aunt you know like that can be weird did you have any strangers at your wedding like people you had literally never met before because i did yeah. <laughs> well, well people, people just like a wedding crasher you mean people no that you, you mean you didn't like know. someone that mike knew that. no no um it, it was just supposed to be mostly for uh, family and friends we had had we had scheduled just a small thing for family and friends but my mom for whatever reason <laughs> I love her dearly, but she invited <laughs> a lot of her work friends too, and I'm just like, hi, oh. welcome, yes, come on, she sit there. She was changing jobs and moving. Oh yeah. That's uh. why. Uh, it was like a goodbye party <laughs> for your mom. <laughs> yeah, see, when you let your mom <laughs> help with the guest list, it, it never goes well. Yeah, I, I didn't mind. Paid for it. Oh, well, see, and that's the other yeah. problem, when your mom is paying for it and you can't say, uh-huh. no, Yeah. but people just don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation where you say, I'm so glad you're paying for my wedding. Thank you. However, you're making my wedding day crappy. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't crappy. It was just like, hi, yes, it's nice to meet you. Welcome to my wedding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you never saw them again, right? Nope, nope never. Yeah. <laughs> Not and even on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, that's for all the weird people Facebook. you met that one time. Anyway. Yeah. Well, things are changing. I, and I do see a definite trend in a smaller getting away from that kind of experience. I mean, people are really saying, look, I don't want 100 people at my wedding. I want my friends, I want yeah. my family, my mom, or and bring special. the dog, yeah, you know. The dog. Yeah, Whatever. the dog comes the a lot. Dog comes. The dog is important. Yeah. <laughs> no cat. my dog. <laughs> <laughs> we ha- oh, we did have a couple who loved their cat, and they wanted to bring them, but they couldn't because, you know, cats. Cats so don't travel. So they had us bring cute little, cat cat these, yeah, these little yeah. statues of them. That, yeah. You know, it was like a representation of them, and at yeah. first I was like, Okay, this looks like but after they explained it, I was like, okay, that you know that makes sense. It, it you know part of your family can't be here, and you made a little representation yeah. of them. Yeah, that, that yeah. Was Same sweet. with dogs too. Some people don't want to bring their dogs. Yeah. They they really think about the dogs. Um, enjoyment and yeah. dogs don't travel well a lot of times and flying and doing all that stuff. So I have a couple right now that we're looking for a little 
uh, cake topper with the, the, dog, the dog and the bride Aww. in the room. Yeah. So that's cute. Yeah, it's fun. They like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, I can't. We just spent. We only talked about two things, and there's a whole. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll keep going. Okay, uh, another th- um, trend number three is magical mysticism, and I've actually seen that quite a bit. Um, talking about like spirituality. Okay. Uh, using special stones, maybe. Um, oh yeah. Mm. Burning I like this one. <laughs> salt, sage, mm-hmm. cleansing auras, that sort of thing. Someone oh, had mentioned. Um, yeah. yeah, we did this, this the sage smudging uh-huh. with a wedding. Mm-hmm. Smudging. You guys have done that one before? Yeah, and we've used uh, people of like, what's the pink? Uh, quartz, rose quartz, mm-hmm. rose quartz. They've used yeah. that. Yeah, um, just different kinds. I'm of not things. even sure what the rose quartz is supposed to. It's supposed it's to represent like love. Love. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, there's like some rocks that. Sorry, I don't know a lot about this topic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, that it meant like a cleansing thing or like. It can be. It mm-hmm. depends upon what intention you set within your rock. It's really weird. Like, right. Like you you're can... supposed to like put an intention in your rock. Kind yeah. of. I, I like it. I think the mm-hmm. sentiment is quite sweet. <laughs> Whatever it is, we do it. <laughs> so we've done it. I, really I have like a lot of random rocks at home, so yeah. Yeah. we do. I've got kids. They're always bringing home special rocks. Yeah. And well, I can't throw them out because now when I see, like, this ugly, lumpy, dirty rock in my house, I think about how happy my kid was when they found it. Yeah. And so now I'm like, aw, dang rock with your meaning in it now. <laughs> so I totally understand where that's coming from. It's true. And Valley of Fire is a natural place for natural things, you know. Yes. All things natural. Rocks and sage and weeds and grasses and all kinds and of stuff <laughs> animals <laughs> yes yeah, that's true we've been yeah. like skulls and skulls we bring in you know all thing, kinds things of that have special meaning should yeah. be at your wedding that have special meaning to yeah. you whether that's rocks or skulls or 42s off of yeah we did that the too books wait 42s yeah. from from the uh Travelers. hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy all oh, right 42 is you know yeah the answer to the universe yeah, yeah. so they they want really? they really love yeah. yes 42 is it's 42 yeah. is the answer okay. the meaning of the universe <laughs> 42. 42 if anyone asks you should know this yeah. so they I wanted to we... incorporate it in their wedding so we like put it behind the cake on the back side of the cake we like put it under their napkins we had we... rocks by the altar yeah it said 42 yeah so, so. We enjoy- that was fun for us too we were like trying to hide stuff yeah you know those yeah. those things that bring in special meaning to your day so I have a new a new bride, and of course that generation grew up with Harry Potter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she he he uh, the her fiance actually proposed to her at Hogwarts in front of the Aww. you know oh, cool. it was really fun. She Thank was you. talking about it, and anyway, so I just thought okay, and um, so there's a I guess there's a phrase always. Yeah. Uh, and so she wants that as her cake topper, and then. Probably we're gonna do some other stuff. I have to bring in these Wands. guys. Yes, we'll have to do something <laughs> to kind of incorporate. I, like it. And we, I was just yeah. gonna say I can make butter beer. Yes, <laughs> I've made butter beer so cake cool. before, so nice. Oh. Yeah, you should make a butter beer cake. Have you read these books? <laughs> I've read one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say you have to at least read one. Yeah, to like... I've read one. Okay. Yeah. It was really fun. Harry yeah. Potter's loads of fun. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. You might be able to help with this one. Mm. Another big trend is inclusive menus. So um, if you have guests that are vegetarian, mm-hmm. include that. You have someone who's vegan, uh, mm-hmm. nut-free, yep. wheat-free. Uh, what, are, what are you seeing as far as people making requests like this? I think you need to include it all within your menu, however you're creating or whatever you're cooking for people. You have to have that option because I feel nowadays there are so many people that have so many different sensitivities to things that you have to you can't just say oh well you know meat is this or you know if you want gluten free or dairy free it's going to be x amount of dollars more i don't think that's fair Mm -mm. for a sensitivity that they can't control right if you're trying to add different things that's a different story but i have a lot of people for coffee ask for dairy free things so for every wedding that we do i always have like almond milk or a different kind of alternative for somebody that's excellent. Yeah. I am not a coffee drinker, but I am a hot chocolate drinker. Mm. And Carmen um, will often come, especially when the weather's cold. Mm-hmm. Um, and Carmen is like a coffee magician person. She really is. Yeah. And <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah, she creates these custom coffees and custom, you know, chocolates. And she even makes like her own syrups that are secret. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. So, secret so syrups. And, secret they're, and they're accustomed and... to the couple too. Like you'll yeah. ask, what do you like? What yep. do you not mm-hmm. like? What do you want to see? And mm-hmm. so some of your stuff has like a lot of flowers in it and other things and real flowers mm-hmm. and eating flowers. Yeah. And, and yeah. all of the syrups are made with essential oils. So mm-hmm. they're super good for you too. There's not a lot of chemical, actually there's no chemicals in it, which is what I really love because I feel like you can really taste those chemicals when you buy those bottles of syrups and try to flavor things and just yeah. pump it in. I have dreams about Carmen's Rose Bouquet Latte or yeah, your Bouquet Latte. <laughs> yeah. Those are my yeah. favorite. I wake up in the morning sometimes thinking, oh, what I would give to taste that Bouquet Latte. It's yeah. just so floral and yeah. refreshing and warming at the same time. It's probably the best coffee drink ever. Yeah. I would say Starbucks get on that, but no. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, Carmen no. <laughs> yeah. It's a custom for sure. Yeah. And yeah. worth it's worth so special to have a special treat on your special mm-hmm. day. Yep. The Very funny good. thing about that is though a lot of times the couples are like, Well, I don't even know what that tastes like. What do you mean it's this and that? I'm like, Would well, you like this? Do you like that? Do you want something that's you yeah. know, kind of exciting or yeah. so it's interesting sometimes they really want to just go wild and make some fun stuff or Try some new things. Right. Or sometimes you have sometimes, to talk them into it. Absolutely. <laughs> but they always love it. They're like, right. oh, wow. Like, please yeah. just try it. I swear it'll be good. <laughs> yeah. And if you hate it, I'll make you something else. Yeah. 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 I don't think anybody's ever hated well, caramel no. coffee. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> So. Every time they're like, um, Every time. may I have some more, please? Yeah, they remark on it a yeah. lot of times in letters thanking us. They'll mention Carmen. They're like, and the coffee. And the coffee. <laughs> and Carmen. And the food. And yes. the spread she put and out. The and the yes. yes. Yep. So. And we're often, you know, trying to take them away for portraits. And they're like, okay, okay, just let me, let me finish my coffee. Let me my finish coffee. my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need some more food. <laughs> yeah. It's like we got, we're wasting daylight, people. Like, yeah. Just eat fast. Come on, pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, going into style now, it looks like veils are not uh, are kind of on the way out, and they're being exchanged for barrettes and combs. I haven't seen that yet. I've seen we're, some, we've seen some, especially yeah. with florals. I was going to say, I've had some combs. Yeah. Mm-hmm, for sure. That's what I was going to bring up was the florals on, on combs. The thing about Valley of Fire is it's very conducive to those long romantic dresses and long romantic. Um, it looks very dramatic. It's yeah. very dramatic, and, and it's really veil and yeah, it's really going. hot right now. It's you yeah. know those and veils are looks. are pretty, but yeah, and you don't have to wear like, them all the time. Yeah, we, we like do. to wear them and then take them out take them and off. then maybe use them for portraits yeah. and then take them out. So having yeah. them easily taken out is yeah. is really that's nice. really important. But we have had a lot of brides and grooms wearing hats. Oh, hats are awesome. <laughs> cowboy hats, and cowgirl flower hats. Too. Flower, lots of flower, flower crowns. crowns. Mm-hmm. And having the bridesmaids even wear flower crowns. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Any grooms wearing fedoras? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we from we wear had, yeah, we did. We sure. absolutely did. <laughs> yeah, love fedoras. from Cuba. And oh, nice. He, he pulled that hat off. I was off. thinking of a different one, but yeah, you're oh, right. That one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two grooms. Two grooms. <laughs> well, excellent. Yeah, I love a gentleman in a hat. Yep. That was great. Okay, we were just talking about this before the um, before we got started recording, but we were talking about trending hues, and according to the Knot, trending hues right now are neo mint, which is that just really really bright mint. It's almost like '80s, like the kind of greenish blue you'd see on a neon sign. Um, okay, a color called Cassis, which is not quite pink, not quite purple. I think it's named after a drink, a wine. Um, yellows, and faded denim. What do you guys think? Faded mm. denim? Yeah. As a color? As a color. As like, um, maybe something sort of like this. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but not necessarily denim. Not, no, not literally I, denim. Again, I did see a bride with, you know, a jacket, a denim jacket. That's and that's cute. super cute. But I was like, I haven't seen any denim. <laughs> yeah. What I've seen is is the terracotta. And again, it's coming through for spring instead of fall. It's a... Terracotta, mm. like that pinkish, orangish. Like yeah, yeah, like color. a yeah. burnt orange. But and burnt orange quite. is coming. Yeah. Oh, Again, not in spring. So good. Yeah, it's, that's true. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. But anyway, but again. But wouldn't, um, wouldn't that color kind of get lost in Valley of Fire, though? No. I don't think so. It matches it well. It really oh. blends in. Because it, it's the same color almost as the rocks. Yeah. And it pulls it all together. What we like almost. to do is... Are they taking laps around the block? I swear. <laughs> So we live so close to Valley of Fire that we often have groups of hundreds of motorcycle riders, yes. and it must be motorcycle Saturday. It must be motorcycle Saturday. <laughs> and and not even motorcycles, sometimes vintage cars yeah, and like vintage. a certain type of car, and they all come, you know, like <laughs> fifty Ferraris or whatever come through. So, yeah. so it's we're fun. just getting some motorcycles. So we're getting a little love today. <laughs> a little. Yeah. What I like to do with terracotta is 
I like contrast. There's there's times when you want kind of a mon monotone with pinks and you know mm -hmm. kind of that and then there's other times where you want the contrast and with terracotta I love the wood tables that we use mm -hmm. and but they're coming in so many wonderful colors so there's a dark brown now mm -hmm. there's a vintage which is kind of a whitey kind white of wash but white not wash, quite but not, warm yeah. it's yeah. um like distressed yeah yes. a little bit like yeah. kind of country chic sort mm -hmm. of okay so there's those kind of tones on the table itself and so then we're using terracotta runners to contrast that and um and i think when you use terracotta on the table and then maybe you've got another maybe a plate that ties into that terracotta and that pulls that together on the table and then you've got this background of terracotta which is the red rocks yeah. it just gives me chills looking That's at really it because it pulls it all together nice it's so nice but it's i've really never nice. seen a bad color of valley of fire even colors where i was like this is bold uh, and i was like oh it's it big looks enough good. To take yeah. yeah i love it's, the bold color ones yeah, yeah i think they really stand out even yeah. though they don't match at all but right. they really but stand out and it, it looks still really looks good, good. Mm -hmm. it looks good and, and so i've thought of you know trying to design that and then i just started stop thinking about it. i was like it always looks good yeah. so i don't even worry about it anymore mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so literally any color can work yeah no matter yeah. what yeah you know, what palette you're working for for your wedding yep. you can't Great go wrong with the outdoors <laughs> seriously yeah. it yeah. just looks good yeah it does look good i That's can't wait to see more jewel tones like, oh, oh yeah. we love jewel, jewel tones so the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's so many the best I, there I, are I, the I favorites i don't have favorites anymore i'm just like it looks you know you can make it go with yeah. almost anything mm -hmm. I, I love them all and it really comes the direction comes from the bride usually mm -hmm. because she likes something and then you're going oh yeah and then you can start getting into that and you start pulling in her her likes and you mm -hmm. yeah. it just kind of makes it's just really interesting how that kind of develops develops yeah. into something that's unique for her and it happens every time every time usually it's uh, it's you it's know fluid. she starts with her ideas and then we kind of work together as long as you can see her vision then mm -hmm. it just it yeah. flows really nice right? yeah so uh, it's excellent. really nice okay well this next one I think is a little more uh, it pertains to indoor locations but maybe you guys might have something to contribute <laughs> about this it's about lighting um, the knot is talking about how really creative lighting is making a big statement I guess now in 2020 like they'll have big neon um, signs instead of um, a traditional altar or wedding arch yeah. um, mm -hmm. but we can't really do stuff like that necessarily since we're all outside but what are you guys seeing as far as statement lighting pieces there's if any I, I, I mean we're seeing them just you know in general for weddings but yeah because we have no power and no <laughs> water and we can't be there past sunset like lighting doesn't make a lot of sense for us we're we're pretty static so rather mm -hmm. than actually it does if you think about it but it's not electrical lighting it right. is there is lighting at the valley of fire that is absolutely natural lighting. you cannot get it anywhere i i think yeah. with the colors of the rock reflecting off the light and then we love to shoot at sunset it's our favorite time and so the light then changes you know from the brights of the day to that soft glowing um, sunset look where you've got purples and oranges and mm -hmm. you know all of that in your background and then that's complementing the rocks of the the valley of fire and then we're shooting this bride and as that sunset hits uh, the light is so soft on their face and it just softens everything and makes it gorgeous and beautiful and so that's our light we are natural light shooters and I was not a natural light shooter when I came on um, originally and it terrified me <laughs> it's usually the other way around people are natural light shooters because they're scared of yeah. how to use their stuff and you know our team is fluid with with like we can use flashes and mm -hmm. other lighting but we find that it just doesn't need it at mm -hmm. Valley of Fire. It's so perfect, so we yeah. tend to not to. It tends to be more artificial when you're using flash, and so we just love that. Now, there's something the way, you know, the old artists in the, you know, in the Rembrandt yeah. eras and the, you know, Michelangelo and how they, you know, that is still worthwhile today to see how the light hits someone on their face and you can angle their face towards the light and it creates a whole yeah. look it's very dramatic know? yeah and you can still manipulate even yeah. with natural light yeah. yeah so really if a bride wants that really big statement lighting piece 
Valley of Fire, Cactus and Lace is perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually can do signs. You know, I've seen the neon signs that are really popular, but we can actually do laser cut signs that are similar to that. Oh, neat. And hang them. Um, they're not lit up, but they're yeah. basically it's lit it's up. That it's that idea. It's, you know, it's that kind of same thing. But That is gorgeous. We already touched on this one, but another big trend is edible florals. Oh, yes. Those are my favorite. <laughs> Your favorite? <laughs> what do you use it for? How do you make them? Um, I don't make them. I order them. Oh, excellent. So I get fresh ones or dried ones. They're, you know, the fresh ones I'll order maybe two days before the wedding. They come the very next day, and then I'll have them just the day before the wedding. And I love just the way that they look on a simple cup of coffee. I'm not good at latte art, so my art is florals <laughs> on my cups of coffee because I don't know how people make all of those little designs and stuff. They flick their wrist and I'm like, oh, look, there's a swan. <laughs> I don't understand. But so I love edible florals. They, you don't have to eat them, but they look beautiful. And if you do want to eat them just to check them out, I mean, I like them. I think they taste too. good. I do too. <laughs> Remember that day when we were shooting those dried roses? Oh my gosh. Oh, we're yeah, 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 we're yeah. taking pictures of something. I don't remember. She's like, donuts. oh, look. Was, was it donuts? No, it was we were at my house. Yeah, we're at our oh, house. Okay. We're hanging out. We're doing something else. We're shooting something else. And you were like, oh, look at these awesome, you know, dried flowers I've that I got. I've just gotten them. And she just opens it up and we're looking at it and smelling them. And then she just puts one in her mouth. And I'll, it was just weird because I was like, <laughs> of all the things that I thought were going to happen fell, right now, it dropped. And I picked it up and I was like, hmm. Still good. <laughs> Let me taste it. Fine. Let me just eat these like chips. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, here, try it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just tastes like, just tastes like salad. It, it does. I, but it's um, a lot more fragrant. It's like yeah, a very fragrant well, salad. The really fun thing about them is, depending upon what flower you get, they all have different flavors. Mm. So there are peppery ones. There are sweet ones. There are bitter ones. There are so many different kinds of flavors. So whatever flavor syrup I have, I try and get... Well, I really try and go with the color scheme. Like, whatever their color scheme is, I would like the flowers to match, match that. That doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> so then then I'll go to the flavors of them. You know, I don't want to put a big, hot, peppery something in a nice, sweet cup of coffee. Yeah. But I love edible flowers. Put them on salads. Put them I just like on when you plates. put them on the salad. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. just pretty. Yeah. That was the first time I'd ever seen flowers on a salad. It was when uh, Carmen did the shootout for us that one oh, time. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, I had this gorgeous salad, and then there was like a little purple pansy. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. people are like, wow. wait, am I supposed to eat this? Yeah. I'm like, yes, yes. please do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's, your setups are usually so pretty that yes. I'm like, yeah. let's not touch it. I mean, as much as I want to eat it, I'm like, that's why I take like a hundred photos of it. So I'm like, <laughs> it's so good. I want to make sure it's captured before it's. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have not ever cooked with, with fresh flowers before. I've done um, like the kinds that you soak in syrup and use in desserts. I've done that in baking before. Okay. Um, does it matter where you get your flowers from? Absolutely. Oh, it does. I, for me, it does. I try and purchase organic as much as possible. Like I could, roses, any roses are technically edible, but I'm not gonna go to my local grocery store and buy some roses and then put the rose petals on flowers or something like that because they're not organic. We don't know how they were sourced. We don't know what pesticides, what pesticides, pesticides and all of that. Like so that. it's I didn't even super think about that. Right. organic. Yeah, super sure. organic. There's um, a place that I order from all the time and they have the best flowers that are the most natural that you can get, I think, so. And they've got pretty quick turnaround on delivery service, too, it yes. seems. <laughs> and what's really awesome is they package it. The way that they package it, they give you, like, bricks of... They're cold. They keep Dry them cold for you. Yeah, something. I don't know what it really is. It's some reusable ice packaging thing, like, because they try and keep it eco-friendly and all of that stuff for you, too. But it's really nice. It's not just like, oh, here you go. Here's some flowers. Because you can go... I've noticed at the grocery store... You can buy some cute little tins, like what you buy your herbs in and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed that they're all wilty. They're dry. They're I'm like mm. not as attractive no, as fresh. No, not at all. Yeah. Even though they are fresh, but they're not. You you, you eat visually before you actually eat absolutely. anything. So absolutely. Absolutely. Looking pretty is important. Yeah. To me. So. <laughs> as a <Thanks>. photographer, <laughs> I needed to look good. <laughs> well, you eat with your eyes first. Yeah. It's always. It's true. So very true. Yeah. Okay, so number nine on the trends list is a table remix. Um, what's big is unusual table shapes, 
or orientation. Oh, that's yeah. right up our alley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're always trying to mix it up. We get yeah. bored. We're like, oh, we've done that. Let's do this. Let's, what else can we do that's different? The it's picture unique. that the knot had on was um, they had like a squiggly looking table. Yeah. It almost looked like the table from The Grinch, you know, at the end yes. of the movie. Yes. 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 sitting at. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. It's like serpentine <laughs> yeah. style. Yeah. So you guys definitely handle the. Oh, yeah. We always try to mix it up and, and make different, you know, even if we're using the same furniture, you know, we do a different arrangement, we do a different style, we do organize them different, you know, so. Yeah. We have a lot of our own pieces that we store and that we pull from vintage uh, wood tables or, um, and then we also can source, um, you know, vintage couches and vintage, you know, setups like that that are, you um, just part of the the general decor that the bride would want mm -hmm. um, and so between the the difference that we can rent we can rent certain styles we can source from our own um, pool we'll buy pool. new things for each mm -hmm. right. you know so we just bring it in make rearrange make it, yeah well I think um, people really don't think I guess too much about tables when they're planning a wedding at least I don't imagine that they do until they realize wait we have to figure out who's sitting with who or Maybe they just think people will well, pick so where they want to sit on their own. It depends. Like some weddings, we just let people sit where they want to sit, especially if it's a smaller group. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we don't have table seating at all, and it's more of a cocktail party with um, cocktail tables. Um, but sometimes we do do seating and, and make sure we know who's who. Like this morning, I asked a bride for, you know, tell me, because I don't necessarily want her to go to the trouble to make up seating because um, she doesn't know what I'm looking at and when what it's going to finalize look like. But I like to know, like, who, tell me who is who and then how they're related to you. Like, is this your friend? Is this your cousin? Like, work colleagues. Yes. Like, tell me and then I can gather the people in the right places. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike and I went to a wedding not too long ago and they had, it, it was a very big wedding. There was people from all over, lots of family, lots of friends. And they had just kind of tables set up in an old, an old boathouse. And we came a really long way. We went all the way to New York for this wedding and we got sat in like the very corner in the very back, like furthest. And we didn't exactly know why at first. We were just like, oh, well, okay. see how it is. <laughs> but it ended up being really great because after we kind of opened up and talked to the people around us, we realized that uh, we were sat at a table with online friends, people we had only known through like an online community we're like you're the person that i knew from that from that video you know we talked to you we had we, <laughs> we know yeah. who you are now we can put we can assign a face to a username and we also got stuck by some uh, distant family members and after chatting with them um we realized they had a boat and they wanted to take it out and since we were visiting they're like yeah come on out on the oh, boat yeah. so that's sweet cool. as nice. guests we got a good boat ride out of that deal but cool. at the same that's time cool. i remember whole thinking sunday boat tour yeah whole sunday awesome. boat tour <laughs> but i remember thinking when i first got there i'm like oh i'm in the corner in the back <laughs> yeah we don't we don't have there's such no big there's no corners <laughs> right you know yeah. like our seating you know 30 people you can't be put in the corner <laughs> yeah. it ended up working out okay yeah <laughs> Um, let's see, self-serve refreshments. Um, it looks like people are choosing this as kind of like a way for guests to interact and also to kind of cut costs on bartenders because I guess bartending fees can get up pretty high. <laughs> we're, we're useful though. <laughs> <laughs> you really are, you keep people from like sneezing in the salads and stuff. Well, you know. <laughs> Yeah. If there's a mixed drink option, I would not do it on my own. Oh I gosh, would, no. I would we, have we always do it. say yeah. Carmen needs to be the bartender because, because then the bride or the groom or one of their guests is having to be bartender. Yeah, and not enjoying the wedding. So right. yeah, it's, if you don't hire a bartender, someone in your group yeah. is going to be the bartender because Carmen will pick it up and deliver it out and and bring the you know tell us what glasses she'd like it served yes. in. And because I'm so ignorant of that stuff. I'm always yeah, like, okay, don't. they're serving what, and do I, I need a wine glass? Do I need a goblet do i need a collins glass do i, I need a whiskey glass what <laughs> goes like, with the wine? we don't uh, you know. yeah so it's really nice when if I they're gonna know. have any alcohol other than just champagne i say please please hire the bartender please <laughs> but i mean there's something to be said for um sort of like this this bar trend you know um 
Help me with words right now. I'm getting so distracted by this darn motorcyclist. <laughs> I think it's fun when you can go up and you have like a mishmash of different types of foods you can put together however you want. Like I know there's Sunday bars. I've seen those before. Oh, yeah. Oh, those um, well, like, like you did the, the hot, hot chocolate, chocolate bar. bar. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so basically you're just warming up milk and then they right. put their stuff in. So I mean, it's fun when you can sort of fix your own food yes. the way you want to. And it's cute. Yes. But somebody is still preparing that. Absolutely. Yeah. For oh. them to then create and it themselves. Yeah. It and if it's, right. yeah. If it's detailed, we really don't have time to mess with that. We will, but we're also setting up chairs and putting up the arch and doing all that. And we have a very limited time at Valley Fire. Um, We usually have between an hour and a half to to two two hours hours to set up an entire wedding. So that's why we like to bring on extra help in the form of Carmen, who can arrange all that and get it. She can yeah. just buy it and sort it out and make, make it, it look pretty. all pretty. And, yeah. and know, she's and really obsessed about it. We're like, yeah. hey, Carmen, we got it. She's like, no, <laughs> this isn't pretty yet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I need to make it look right. pretty. Yeah. I'm like, don't shoot that. Why would you get the back of this? It's terrible. She's like, wait, wait, no. <laughs> she gets so bad we start shooting before she's ready. So. Yeah, so I do like the idea of self-serve, but I also like the idea of having a person in charge yeah. of that, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So. You got to supervise. I mean, yeah. you got to make sure the kid isn't walking off with the entire bowl of like yeah, chocolate Yeah, exactly. Chips. That happens. Or that it, it runs happens. out. <laughs> it needs to be refilled if it runs out mm-hmm. and, yes. you know, those kind yes. of things. So. Exactly. So somebody, even with uh, these uh, self-serve, you have to yeah. have somebody watching. Yeah, and even somebody like our desserts, food. you know, that might be a self-serve, mm-hmm. you know, like dessert bar you know somebody's someone on our team is refilling that someone is mm-hmm. making sure yeah. the yeah. kids don't light themselves on fire with the s'mores bar you know like somebody's watching them. <laughs> <laughs> they never did that <laughs> that never happened that's not once oddly specific no way oh. <laughs> it didn't happen crisis was averted oh it, that's it did good. not happen <laughs> thanks to our team watching the fire <laughs> We didn't have any children just burned at the wedding. Oh, man. Uh, Yeah. Okay. So um, another big one kind of goes back to lighting, I suppose, is um, statement wedding decor, like the personalized wow factor. The one thing at the wedding that just makes guests go, what? We always try to have that. Exactly. Yeah, we, we do. We were talking earlier on another cast about uh, the pony, which I feel like is a... <laughs> yes. <laughs> statement. That's definitely that a big statement. That's a pony. Yeah. No. The, the, yeah, the statement piece might be the pony. It might be the arch. It might be, mm-hmm. um, you know, the table. I always feel like the when board. I'm designing, I'm like, what's the statement piece? Because mm-hmm. if there isn't one, it feels like, okay, mm-hmm. thank you. Right. But I feel like we right. need something that's like yeah. unique to you, something mm-hmm. that's special, something like, where's the focal point? Yeah. I had an unintentional statement piece at my wedding which was it was a giant taxidermy polar bear wow I had awesome. brought it as like a it was it came with the bar that it was at and it was kind no. of like surprise and it, <laughs> no it was fabulous it ended up being great everyone wanted selfies with a taxidermy polar bear that was just i think it's awesome <laughs> you know? wow. so that's what happened at my wedding sorry i'm glad you had one yes. i thought i don't even know what to say to that i <laughs> I chose this place because it had um, a 200-year-old bar in it. Like, it oh, had, like, um, cool. it was hand-carved. It was, you could see, like, the scars of a million cowboy boots, like, in the in the yes. front. And it was gorgeous. It had a veined mirror in the back. Um, 200 wow. years old. It was gorgeous. I thought this would be the centerpiece. But they put us in a little kind of side room off to the, it had a gorgeous fireplace, so I was okay with that. But there was a huge polar bear in it. I like it. <laughs> it seems right for you guys, really. It does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what kind of um, wow factors have you guys done recently for Bryce? Now I want to think of weird ones. I mean, like, <laughs> well, the I mean, better right. than a polar bear. Right. No, the polar, polar bear was an accident. I didn't Still that on purpose. Still a great accident. <laughs> yeah, I think the pony is mm-hmm. probably the biggest state, you know, live ones that well, the live ones. walk yeah. around are probably the biggest statement pieces I can think of. We had a bride um, that wanted her guests to be able to play a bunch of instruments. Oh, yeah. yeah. Remy and Sophie. Remy mm-hmm. and Sophie. And uh, so we procured probably... Thanks, Mike. Ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you instruments. to that. We had we had instruments coming from these guys and yeah. Ray. And I mean, yeah. just... Because it was... She wanted a kind of a gypsy look. And so we were doing all kinds of <laughs> crazy things with rugs and chairs. Yeah, that was chairs a nice living and, room set up. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was Ottomans awesome. Huh? Yeah. So it was fun. Um, but I love our new arches. We've got triangle arches and uh, just really 
oh gosh, they're doing yeah, octagons of, yeah, and cool things. all kinds of stuff. Oh, my favorite was, um, and this is when pompous grass, but we, we did a, an entire arch of pompous grass, which was our first one. Yeah, a big semicircle. Yeah, we made a big semicircle, and it was, oh, I loved that. I loved that pompous grass in there yeah, it was against fancy. the rocks of the Valley of Fire. Again, contrast the white pompous grass and the red deep rocks, and I still love that. Mm -hmm. That's one of my gorgeous. favorites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the next one, number 12. Dress to impress. More colors for grooms. Um, mm. Grooms are shying away from the traditional black. Mm -hmm. We love it. Suit. We love it. Because again, it incorporates their personality. My favorite is, um, oh gosh. She got her hair done at Atomic and her groom wore the spider oh, web yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah. Is it Holly? Oh, wait. No, maybe I'm thinking of a different one than you. I don't know. Uh, Who are you? <laughs> no, they were from England, right? Are you thinking know. of the guy with like the tropical, like the pineapple shirt? No, but he was pineapples. awesome too. Yeah. <laughs> I love pineapple shirt in a way. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, but I just like it when the groom dresses up in general. Like he wears yeah. colors. He is, you know, like He's maybe it's subtle. In it. Or yeah. the socks. I love it. You know, we're they just like, let me put my personality into my outfit, you yeah. know, where the yeah. guy's not just here We've had, a suit. Um, gosh, blue velour suits that were awesome. Mm. He had matching velour shoes. You were gone. Yes. No. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, there was another one. Oh, oh there's <laughs> two. I was there for one. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. just stuff like that. Plaids that were yeah. just subtle. They didn't take away from the bride, but they kind of said, hey, I'm here too. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so, yeah, like we have that. pocket watches and mm -hmm. yeah. all kinds of stuff that they'll bring and, and, and add to. I love yeah. that. that. So we really happy. like it. Engraved little things. Yeah. And More colors for grooms. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> yeah. With Go hats. Hats. With hats. Yeah. <laughs> hats and colors, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, they're also talking about unique wedding dress codes. Have you seen any, like, maybe parties that have come together with... Uh, Oh, like when the cop, like when the guests and they dress, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy when all the guests are like Imagine get the memo of. and they're like, "We're wearing jewel toes," and I'm like, "Oh, you guys are so beautiful." It looks great. It, it does. Really does. It makes the group pictures just like yeah. Oh, mm, please do that. Tell your guests what to wear. Yeah, <laughs> tell them what to wear, and then they won't. But most of them will. And most of them do. They're yeah. like they they would like a direction, you know, like what should I wear to your wedding. You know, should, are you are you wearing brown tones or earth tones? Is it jewel tones? Mm -hmm. Is it yellows? Is it yeah. bright? Is it teals? I think that's so nice when they know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Just know that Aunt Sarah, who wears her bright red dress on the pale pink wedding day, mm. is going to go in the back. I'm mm. telling you, she'll oh. be hidden. <laughs> so, oh no! I'm see, I've seen it happen. <laughs> anyway. yeah, yeah, it's a warning to all guests. Yeah. <laughs> Coordinate. Coordinate. Don't be the girl in the red dress. No. The pink wedding. <laughs> we went to a that last wedding I was telling you about was a we went to a steampunk wedding. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I, I dress vintage, but I don't know the first thing about steampunk. Like I know a lot of it is stylized, and a lot of it is in the details. Yes. And I had no idea what to do for that. I just went with historical for the era. I'm like, mm, Edwardian. So yeah. I went, and it looked okay. And everyone's like, Whoa, well, Alex, you did Edwardian. It looks fantastic. It was yeah. historically accurate, but I kind of stuck out in that I wasn't wearing goggles. And I didn't have any cogs on me. That is better, though. I mean, you 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 match, but you were still yourself. That I, I bet you wasted. I, I need to see a picture. Yeah, it's on Instagram. I'll show you. Okay. okay. We want to see it for sure. Okay, this one I have to look up. Um, a thing that's coming up is called the Cheese Hour. It's an alternative to the Viennese Hour, and I'm like, what is the Viennese? Yeah, I was like, well, hour. Well, what? That All must I know be like it's a cocktail hour. That must be yeah. like a like a formal wedding thing. But I I had. Even if there's a cheese hour, I never heard of it. I mean, we have plenty of cheese, though. This is true. I love cheese. We should have cheese hours, like on regular days. <laughs> well, the Viennese hour, I found out, is an opulent dessert display following the cake cutting. Oh, we and do that a lot. I just didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> that's apparently what it's called. It's called the Viennese hour. That's an old Yeah, tradition. you cut the cake, and then everybody eats delicious desserts, desserts. for a while. Yeah. Yes. yes. But as an alternative to the, Vienna, the Viennese hour, excuse me, again, with the... Mm, a lot of eggs. Now we're having the cheese hour. So we're having like charcuterie instead. Okay. Yes. So after, it's, is it still a dessert? Like after dessert? 
Um, they're having like charcuterie opposed to dessert because they don't want uh-huh. to have too many sweets oh, because oh, some people yeah. are finding that you know it's like yeah. well we have all this cake we're gonna eat the cake and then what we're yes. gonna have macaroons and mm-hmm. and donuts that sounds too. okay too mm-hmm. I'm in support of both <laughs> you should have a cheese hour then eat cake then have more desserts it's like but that's British. you have the cake and the cheese at the same yes. time mm-hmm. yes all the things all the things <laughs> all the things it like. is a trend though like, moving away from sugars uh, we've noticed yes uh, people are really trying to be more health conscious. Mm. At a wedding, though, it's kind of like, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event, we hope, and and you bring in the sugars and things like that. But there's also, you know, pulling in the healthier Mm. stuff like fruits and charcuteries. and and I like having the charcuterie because then the guests are doing something, Mm -hmm. you know, while we're doing pictures or other things, Mm -hmm. you know, they're... They have somewhere to, to go and snack, and it's not like, oh, I finished my plate of food. What should I do now? Right. Yeah. And a lot of times people do come up more than once to get stuff. It's really yeah. a social hour for them. Yeah. And you, they talk around the right. table. Right. It mm-hmm. becomes a gathering place. Mm-hmm. Food is a gathering for yeah. most most weddings, I find. And it socializing and, yeah. you know. Something for all the guests to do while bride and groom are getting their pictures taken. Yeah. yeah. Just something to. Yeah. It's just a good idea. It is a good idea. We like always a cheese. Cheese. <laughs> cheese is always a good idea. Okay, um, the next one is a charity check, offering donations to the bride and groom's favorite charity as opposed to receiving gifts. Mm. We don't do a lot of gift like we yeah, don't we really never have a gift gifts. table yeah, we in, don't. in general because it's usually a destination wedding. It's it's yeah. more of an event. People, but maybe that's just from what we do. Mm, and yeah. if that's happening, it's unbeknownst to us. Yeah, have we, you we had don't. any couples that have wanted to make donations or at least ask their guests for donations to a specific charity? Again, mm-hmm. if they do, it's not direct from us. So mm-hmm. It's not something we're really involved in. Well, what do you think about that as opposed to receiving? Because I guess most people nowadays are getting married later on in their lives. You so know, they have a career. Up they yeah. have their houses. They, they don't, don't need a blender. They don't exactly. Right. They don't need a blender. Um, they're combining homes basically at this point. It's not like back in the old days when you're a couple of teenagers starting, starting out starting out all on your own from scratch. Um, I think this is a great way for the bride and the groom and um, their family and their guests to yeah. pitch into something to a cause that's important to them. That's a great. Yeah, you know, and it, it pretty... brings it almost back to the the you know eco. You know, your instead of your wedding being a drain. It's it's something uplifting. It's something good for people. It, you know, you your event and your love and celebrating that made the world a better place <laughs> instead of you know wrecking it. So, yeah. Yeah, do like you think that. at a lot of larger weddings that big gifts are still a really big thing? I I've seen less just you know going yeah. to weddings. I see less and less gift tables. Yeah. You know, people say yeah. help support our honeymoon or yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's know, what we did our, at the last yeah. one we went to. They asked for contributions right. towards specific events at their right. right instead of just hey give us a check right um it was more like would you like to help us support this and it's not necessary if you show up to a wedding now without a gift it's not a faux pas it's, it's not something you have to bring right so i really like that trend if you could donate to um, a charity what would it be I would say historical preservation. That one's my favorite. That's such a you thing to I say. Well, you yeah. know what? Museums need money. They do. <laughs> oh, there's so many great ones. My One of my favorite is just the basic water. Uh, there's so many countries yeah. where clean water is not oh an option. Gosh. And yeah. diseases are rampant because of it. And so there's a few. And, and I see this a lot on... You know, different social media sites where somebody says, "This is my birthday. Instead of buying me a present, donate to let's buy a well for right. this little place." Yes. And so I love that idea and thought. You know, very, yeah, I agree, very worthwhile. But there's so many. Oh yeah, so many. Yeah, it's really hard to choose one. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you know, really go wrong there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pick so a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is uh, personalized paper making your invite super quirky like pop-up invites yeah open I, up and I, I love the invites it's not something we get to see a lot because again it's it's something the bride and groom handle and and they send out to their guests and we don't always get one but I do love it when they bring it to the wedding yes. and then we or get to photograph them with the setup especially when they made it match and I'm like yay <laughs> yeah yeah I love it when they mail us a yeah an invite copy or bring it with um yeah. What are your favorites that you've seen so far? 
Uh, there's there's too many favorites. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I like it when it matches the decor. Like when they, you know, make it match the Pinterest board. That makes me so happy. <laughs> because then when they when they bring it and photograph it, it makes sense. And it looks like it's all cohesive. it belongs, yeah, on the day. Yeah. Yeah. But again, bring it in your own personalities. For that steampunk wedding that I went to, what they had done with their invitations is they had um, an artist cartoon the the groom and the bride yeah. on it, and they used all their wedding colors too, which was gold and lilac. Cool. So it was just cartoon characters of the bride and groom dressed up all steampunky and oh. in gold and lilac, <laughs> That's and it was awesome. gorgeous. And oh, it's still, cool. even though the wedding was like almost a year ago now, I still have it up on my bulletin board because the art was so dang yeah. cute. Yeah, <laughs> then it becomes a piece of art that you want to keep. You're not going to throw it in the trash because it means something. It's, yeah. it's beautiful to look at. Yeah. That's so fun. that's why they're having, um, I guess that's why people are doing quirkier invites, like uh, yeah. using different textures too, Yeah. like including fabric, I suppose, yeah. in the invites mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah, there's so many talented people out there right now that are you know, graphic artists and doing, you know, work yeah. like that. And so if that's something you really like, I, I would say go for it and yeah. send us a copy. Yes, <laughs> so we, for sure. We do live. Like okay. That. Uh, the next one, I think we kind of touched on this one already, was interactive eats. I guess in some places, conveyor belts. Serving your food on a oh, conveyor that's belt. Awesome. Is like a sushi restaurant? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, not something we can do at Valley of Fire, no. but really cool. We could slide it down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> just sit at the top of the hill on top of the rock and then just shoot the skin down. Like a sand Have slide. a little slide. <laughs> Here yeah. No. <laughs> I'm thinking not, but cool otherwise. Yeah, cool idea. That, I don't know if that's a trend that will stick around, though. I mean, it's kind I of don't know. It really quirky. quirky. Yeah, it is quirky. Man, we should have done <laughs> conveyor belt sushi. <laughs> Yeah, that would have fit With you our guys taxidermy too. polar bear. <laughs> uh, we did that the next week on the honeymoon. Oh, that's right. We went to Japan and got that's all Japan. of that. Yeah. Went to the sushi yeah. go Just go to Japan if you need to get people. That's awesome. Um, I guess that kind of just ties in with all the, those other trends of like having bars, you know, having food options that our guests are able to serve for themselves. We don't need to go back into that. Yeah. But what, I, I got to say, one trend that I'm glad is on the way out is the donut wall. I hate the donut wall. <laughs> Why? It makes me so angry because I'm as someone who bake, angry no, donut walls make you. Angry. They do because as someone who was a baker in a bakery for a long time, uh-huh. I see you know these trees just getting stale. Up there, That's true. Just they getting do. stale, and I'm like, there's so many cute ways that you can display your food. And they won't get stale. Yeah. Because, I mean, by the time the wedding's over and people are, like, gathering up the leftovers, you're not going to want these crusty old donuts. That's true. And that is true. The donut wall is cute. I like the way it looks. No. But I agree. It's not... Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. (laughs) So we we had a wedding where, um, just recently... (laughs) So we used the donut wall that we rented, but we actually flipped it upside down mm-hmm. so the donut word was hidden and mm-hmm. put some flowers there and there was this cute scrolly design at the top and then mm-hmm. we used it for her mugs. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. great. I that was it. great. Right. And it was the donut so wall fun. cuteness there. Yeah. Right. But mugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mugs. Matched with yeah. the hot chocolate that, bar. That makes sense. That yeah. sounds adorable. But so. Donuts are not... I, I love them personally. Yeah, I could eat a lot um, of donuts. But they don't work at weddings for us because they do go bad so quickly. And mm. we're usually picking up things just right before the day before, mm-hmm. bringing them out, and they're already yeah. dry. Then don't it's trying to be fresh. Yeah, yes. they need to be fresh. And, and then it's right like trying to get, we have to get someone yeah. to bring it directly mm-hmm. from the baker immediately. And even then, again, yeah. you put it on immediately, but you're putting it out in, out the, in desert, the desert where so it's dry, dry out. on a wall. <laughs> so, yeah. It does dry out easy. There are so many other better things I think I like, you know. Even the cupcakes were I'm I'm moving into other things. There's you know? so many good dessert There's options. So right? many cupcakes good dessert. are cute, sure. Yes, they but. are cute. Easily held in the hand. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of good, good desserts out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's why it makes my eye twitch when I see the donut boards, because I just think that donuts need to be fresh and that's the quickest way to get them not fresh. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh. true. It's true. Okay. She's a connoisseur, you can... <laughs> Yeah. No, just it just makes the baker inside me a little bit angry, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are actually running out of time, so let's run through these last couple ones really quick. Uh, spray painted stems. They want, in their floral arrangements, they want like a ridiculous flash of color, like just something bright. I like it when they do gold, like spray painted florals gold that or silver is really mm-hmm. cool. 
I have not seen like another bold color that's been spray painted like that. The picture that the knot used was uh, very unique actually. It looked like the bride had uh, brass knuckles Oh. And she had her floral arrangement on it. <laughs> I, this is what I was saying as I was looking at it. And she had a bright, it looked like a bit of a fern that was spray painted bright pink coming off the side. And that was her. It does sound very 80s, like bringing the 80s is coming back, which a lot of that I like. But that sounds very... I was just like, are those brass knuckles? Yeah. <laughs> is that how she was holding it? I don't know. I think that could be done well. But it could also go real bad, real fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's unique. I had to say that for yeah. sure. When I saw that particular arrangement, I'm sure um, front porch would be delighted to. Yeah, and I bet that you know we could. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not brass knuckles. I'm not sold on the brass knuckles, but I think you you could make that work with a different color in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is to the max fashion. Bigger, bolder dresses. Not so much um, the smaller, simpler sheath dresses, um, but they're moving towards something that makes her feel like a princess on her princess day. Oh, I like princess dresses. Me too. Sure. I love wearing crinolines. I'll just, in case you didn't know. I mean, yes, we know. You know my love for crinolines. My, my wedding dress was massive. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I, I, I put it, someone to make it bigger. Yes. And I was just like, yeah, let's. I want a poofy. Cool. Yeah, I want a poofy <laughs> dress. Poofy <laughs> dresses are good. I've seen a lot of crop top dresses. Yeah. Where you have like a crop top and then you have a nice big flowy yeah. skirt. I like Wait, so like 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 sleeveless or not necessarily, but like like short. Like yeah, like showing your midriff. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But then the skirt is higher, so it's not really you're I not know. showing like your entire button. Right. You know. Right. Are they connected or is it just no. sort of like a? It's, it's like two piece. Two, yeah. It's two piece. Mm -hmm. I've never. I have not seen that. We had a bride that did that. Yeah. Teresa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She looks so cute in that mm -hmm. one. I loved her in that. It was so cute. Like, I'm sure it would be gorgeous, but I'm having a hard time conjuring that image of, like, a crop top wedding dress. Mm, it's sorry. good. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds, it sounds right. but it's good. It can be really well done. Yeah. Really well done. Okay. Uh, Spirited Sips is number 19. Um, mocktails. Mm. And I guess the alcohol of choice is gin, which makes me super excited because I love a gin ricky. I've been drinking those for ages. <laughs> Of course you have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's favorite drink. He drank, uh, the Great Gatsby drank uh, gin ricky, so of course I have a favorite yeah, drink. Yeah, you should drink it, for, you know, just on that. I mean, right there. It's in the Great Gatsby. You should have some. But that part made me excited because I'm just like, Great Gatsby, gin, bring it back. <laughs> so, well, Gin is making yeah. a new reappearance. I feel like gin kind of faded out of the spirit world for a while, and now there are a lot of companies that are coming out with just bigger brand names, more florals, more... What, what is gin made from? Is it's herbals. It's oh. just different botanicals and roots and stuff like that. So it's extremely... It tastes like um, a pine wreath to me. It's juniper Delicious. berries. Delicious! <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you smell it. It smells so refreshing. It's right. like... Oh, it smells it's like, like juniper berries and a bunch of different herbs. And oh, okay. It smells like you're sticking your face in like a Christmas tree. Oh, It's what okay. it smells like. And it's so good. I've been getting a lot of targeted advertisements for uh, Empress 1908 gin, which is bright purple. <laughs> wow. Oh. So I do like it when the drinks are colorful or interesting yeah. to photograph. Cause well, I've been looking at mocktails just recently because I am yeah. trying to figure out a certain bride's. Um, she wants a... It's called Peach Moonshine, and it was made with peach tea and oh, yeah. something else. Oh, yeah. Anyway, about that. lemonade. Anyway, yes. but I, I thought, well, yeah, this is this is an alcoholic drink, but why couldn't you do this with a similar, yes. with the beautiful colors in a mocktail? Yes. And have the glasses all decorated. Me so and Lori both don't drink, so yeah, we, we don't like mocktails. We, we okay? don't drink so. fancy yeah. drinks where we feel fancy. But yeah. <laughs> So anyway, we but you can make it just as beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I was just really excited to look yeah. at that. There are a lot of companies out there that are bottling these mocktails and kind of... It's, Selling them like soda? Yeah. <laughs> well, not really. It's being geared towards people who are maybe trying not to drink as much as they do or if they come home and have a glass of wine or something and people are into that habit of just pouring themselves a drink at the end of the day to unwind, they have these pre-made mocktails you really just open the bottle and you put some ice in there you can garnish it if you want to but it's already a pre-mixed something and it still makes you feel like you're yeah. almost having a cocktail if that's yeah what you like but there's no have. alcohol in it no oh feel no. fancy feel yeah fancy. i liked it when you, you put you're shaking your head four back there i want to try it <laughs> he's in mike's no he's, not he's like no he's no, like no, look no, i need no, alcohol no, <laughs> not the mocktails you're pointing at me no not for me no, oh, no, oh. no. <laughs> I'm to try that. That's why I'm pointing at you. 
but I like it when they're pretty, you know, to oh, photograph too. well. Like, you would make them with florals. Them. Florals in the yeah. ice. Yeah. Yes. So pretty. Like, such a complicated detail, but so cute. <laughs> they were not the easiest things to make. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, florals and ice cubes? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I would imagine that you would, I don't know, obviously, but you'd pour half in, maybe freeze it a little bit, mm -hmm. put yeah. a flower in there. Pretty much. A little bit more. Yeah. Right. It took me a minute to realize that, though. Otherwise they, they float. <laughs> or no, they float. float. Oh. So they just sat on top. So I filled the ice cube tray for the first time that I made them, and I stuck them in there. I was like, huh, that's not going to work. <laughs> okay. Let me dump some of this out. Let me try it this way. And I was like, oh, that's how you have to do it. Yeah, it's not It's not complicated. It's just a little more time consuming. Time consuming. consuming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Placing all in, you know, if you've got 30 ice cubes and you got to keep them frozen, right? And fire. if you're making cocktails, you put, you know, X amount of ice cubes in each drink. So I'm making 100 ice cubes with yeah, pretty little flowers in them, right? Yeah, but it's worth it for the picture for sure. Okay, for this last one, I saved it for last because it's the craziest. I'm just like, what is this? It's um, the new amenity basket. Um, you can station, well, a manual basket is in like when you go to the ladies' room and there is a uh, hairspray. And oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, right. This one is crazy. <laughs> this one is you station a tarot card reader or a champagne bar or a, you pass out tubes of lipstick outside of the bathroom so the party won't stop. People don't quit partying when they go to the bathroom. This is true. <laughs> I. You know I love to party in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, well, I was thinking of Valley of Fire bathroom. Okay, but that is not a bathroom you want to party at. No, <laughs> definitely not. No, because they're, uh, they're pit latrines at Valley of Fire. <laughs> yeah, but we do have a basket mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, hand wipes and sanitizer and hairspray and just other things you might need, but that's more from necessity. Right. You know, like, this is a pit toilet and you're going to want to clean your hands afterward <laughs> kind of thing. But um, I like a tarot card reader. We should station one. <laughs> I can read tarot cards. I'll do it next oh time. Oh, my gosh. We should <laughs> offer that. Please, somebody, let's have tarot card readings at your wedding to Valley it's of Fire. I can dress I mean, so cute for that. You don't necessarily need to be in the bathroom, though. I think we'll keep you right. like, set. But I think that's a super cool idea. Yeah, I think that's fun. Yeah. That one I thought was just weird. I'm like, I just got out of the bathroom. I don't want someone to read my fortune. <laughs> I don't want to like grab champagne after I just look. Yeah. I can imagine someone being like champagne the second I walk out of the door. I, I agree. That is a little weird. Yeah, strange placement for sure. But, but I guess the, the idea is um, even if you stepped aside for a second, we're still having We're still partying. Yeah, and I do like at a restaurant, you know, when you're like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. And then the bathroom is just like crappy stalls and you're like, mm, I feel like I went somewhere else. I like it when the bathroom makes sense for the, you know, where you're at. Well, and you so like I think fancy that's bathrooms. I do love fancy bathrooms. <laughs> fancy bathrooms are the best. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I judge a restaurant by its bathroom. I'm like, look, if the bathroom is not cool, your restaurant's not cool. <laughs> I can't tell you how many bathroom photos we've taken yeah. just of the bathroom, not of us. Yeah. Like. Well, that's, that's because I'm a weird artistic photographer who has right. to take weird pictures of the bathroom. Not even a selfie, just the right. bathroom just selfie. the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's probably just me. Yeah. I mean, I don't think other people photograph in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You got a good bathroom shot? <laughs> who was it that wanted a picture of the latrine? One of the brides. Oh, oh, yeah. She just wanted to know what it looked like. And she was like, look, I, I, so, I can't book Valley of Fire until I know what the bathroom looks like. And I'm like, okay, all right, right here we're you gonna, go. We're going to take a picture for you. <laughs> There's no light, no running water, but you know what? It's still tidy. We keep it tidy. Yeah. <laughs> and it smells clean in the picture. <laughs> yeah. They're not that bad. They get the job done, and there's, do. there's a place Most without. people, I don't know that the bride uses them very no, much. You you're know, only there about three yeah. hours, you yeah. know? You use the restroom before you come out, mm -hmm. and there is places to stop on the way. There are yeah. flushing toilets, so it's yeah, yeah, like the visitor center. Yeah, has a restroom. Yeah. And the entry gate has. Yes, a and we always body. encourage people to stop there or at the Indian yeah. reservation on the way in, so that you can use a real flushing toilet. Yeah, <laughs> you can actually have water with a sink. Yeah, yeah, a sink. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, you guys. And on that note, let's end on it. Yeah. Different <laughs> note. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we don't have to talk about the bathroom. <laughs> Let's talk about, hey, brides, let's, uh, so one of you guys, ask for tarot card readings. Yes. <laughs> I've got a gorgeous new deck, and I only ever read for myself and my friends. I want to read for somebody else. It'd that be sounds fun. so much fun. It'd be fun. Please do that. <laughs> I have some fairy cards. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. excited. Mm -hmm. Bring in that magical mysticism we were yes. talking about. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, on that much happier note, <laughs> I think it's time that we should wrap this up. Um... I'm Alex with Cactus and Lace Weddings. 
I'm Rachel. Cactus in the Hispanic. I'm Lori. And I'm Carmen with Sweet Sauce Coffee. Oh, and um, thank you so much for watching. Keep loving one another, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Okay, can we eat this more? Because yeah, absolutely. I've been picking I've been, it. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> let's really eat this. <gasps> this is what you should post, really. <laughs> the after. Just, well, he's probably not done recording. I know. He just keeps recording.